I'm about to do something new. These were the words spoken by God and recorded in chapter 43 of Isaiah, as you've just heard read. The Israelites had a tendency to look back in the past to remember the events of history. The passage recalled the crossing of the Red Sea, opened a way in the sea, a path through mighty waters, was the way the passage expressed it. This passage was written while the Israelites were in exile in Babylon, and it is possible that the writer had never lived in Israel, had been in Babylon all his life. But he was convinced that God would redeem them and return them to the promised land. Just as God had brought out his ancestors from Egypt, so God would not forget them. Isaiah encourages them not to look in the past, not to dwell on past events, but to look forward. God is just about to do a new thing. He expects that God is going to pardon them and return them from exile. But would this be good news to all the Israelites? To those of them who had held on to the hope of God, it would be wonderful. But for those who had settled into a comfort, comfortable life in Babylon, it would perhaps be a disturbing thought. Was it believable that it would happen? Well, it should have been, because God had led them at various times, led them through the Red Sea, defeated armies so they could get home. And so he would be able to protect them on their journey from Babylon to Judea. The problem was that Israel had got used to the old things and didn't want to change. These people were just about to experience the biggest change of their lives. God was going to do a new thing. They were going back to the promised land. They were on the brink of a major change. Paul, on the other hand, had already made that change on the road to Damascus. In his letter to the Philippians that you heard read, Paul restates his personal testimony. He tells the inhabitants of Philippi what he was before he changed an Israelite by race from the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew, a Pharisee, with a zeal for religion, a persecutor of the Christian church. He was prepared to write off all this past because he had gained a knowledge of Jesus. He called his former status garbage or rubbish in the version that you heard read. His one desire is to know Jesus and the power of his resurrection. God has done a new thing in Paul's life. He's taken a traditional Pharisee and altered his life to become a Christian missionary and a theologian. Paul had undergone a change. The change in the lives of the Israelites in Babylon and the change in Paul's life were major changes. Changes that made their lives completely different. But these changes were minor when compared with the changes that Jesus caused. He came onto this earth to give us a pattern for our lives, to show God's love for us, to show that he wanted to enter into a personal relationship with each one of us, Jesus came to save us, to redeem us, to bring us back to the love of God. He did this by suffering and dying for each one of us. This death is the biggest change that happened in the whole of history. A change that affected those alive at the time, a change that affected those who had already died, and a change that would affect those who would be born in the future. God had done 
another new thing. He had sent his son onto this earth to make the change. And in 12 days time we'll remember the suffering that Jesus went through for us. And in two weeks time we will celebrate his glorious resurrection when he conquered death, when he conquered the power of sin. Here are events that are unique in the history of the world. Definitely a new thing. Here is the next phase of the plan for the human race. God's son dying for us. And God continues to do good things, new things. As I already said, Paul on the road to Damascus came after this. A pillar of Jewish society who was determined to crush the Christians met the risen Jesus and his life was altered. His one desire is to know Jesus, to share in his sufferings and to attain the resurrection from the dead. His quest for perfection is intense. He wants to get closer to Jesus. He wants to forget the past. He wants to press on to the finishing line, to win the heavenly prize, to live with Jesus for all eternity. Would have been very easy for, for Paul to have said, I've seen the Lord. I believe in him, I support him, I worship him, and do nothing else. Did he do that? No. He knows that God is constantly doing new things, and he wanted to share in the work of God. These new activities, these new challenges, these moments of glory, these moments of pain, and these moments of joy, he wanted to share in them all. Paul was an agent for change in the world during his lifetime and for centuries to come. But what about us? Does our life mirror the life of Paul? Do we accept the challenges that God sends us? Each one of us is in a different place. Some of us have met Jesus and had their life transformed. Some of us have known Jesus since we were young. Some of us turned our back on Jesus and then realized I'd made a mistake. We found him, not that he was lost, but you know what I mean, and moved forward. The human race is basically conservative. No, 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 small c. The older we get, the less change we like. I know there are some exceptions, but they are exceptions. But God is always doing new things, doing new things in our lives, doing new things in our churches, doing new things in the world. We can sit back and say that we know Jesus and so are saved, but is this what God wants us to do? I think the answer is no. We need to find new ways of living, new ways of worship, New, we need to discover what new things God is doing here in Errol. Is it easy? No. Will it be easy? No. We must find new ways of serving God. We must find new ways of worshipping God. We must find new ways of bringing people to God. Paul described life as a race. Not a short race, but a marathon. Not a race against others, but a race nonetheless. So what do we do? As a church, try new ideas. Don't sit in the past. Try something new and persevere. One of the churches I was involved in decided they would have a service on a Wednesday evening. And once a month had a Wednesday evening because they realised that some people couldn't get there on Sunday. Did it work? Well, you never know whether worship works or not. People turned up. It didn't last more than a couple of years, but they tried, tried something different. But we need a balance, old and new, lively and peaceful, noisy and quiet. And the answer is not obvious. 
but we must try. And individually, we need to review our lives. What else can we do? Something you will crop up. Some things you're doing already. But are there extra things? Something simple and practical, for example. Helping the housebound, volunteering at the local charity, donating to the poor via a food bank, supporting the disadvantaged, doing something extra at church, door duty, reading the Bible, plenty of scope. Something simple and more theoretical, getting closer to God, getting to know him better by reading the Bible, praying more, joining a Bible study group. Something more complicated, setting up a Bible study group or leading a Bible study group. And sometimes something really scary comes along. When Grant asked me to consider taking over from him, I was flattered for about 10 seconds. Then the idea terrified me. I wasn't capable of doing that. I'd never conducted a funeral. I'd never taken services every week. But God, I believe, was challenging me, taking me out of my comfort zone, getting me to do something new. And I have to say, without the support of a number of people, I would have stopped. And I'm not going to name them. Am I feeling better? I'm feeling a bit more comfortable about it. But it's still something that I find hard, but I feel God is asking me to do it. God wants us to do new things in our lives. We need to push on. We need to run the race. We need to run to the finishing line. And through all of this, God is there beside us, is with us, protecting us and supporting us. And without it, we would find life really, really hard. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we know that you are always challenging us to do something new. We pray that we will look at our lives and see what it is that we can do extra for you. Perhaps we are not able to do things physically now, but there are other things that we can do that will help in your extending your kingdom in this world. We ask these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen.